My hypothesis is that the more you use dilase chrome endoscopy techniques, the more your eye becomes trained to find lesions because you are switching from white light to dye and then there is a contrast going on all the time where you do this switch during your procedure and your eye becomes more focused on detecting changes in the mucosa. So this is something that's just a hypothesis, but I have found that from the moment that I started to use any type of advanced imaging technique that my detection rate and characterization of lesions improved because this is what we want to become. We want to be polyp detectors and have high percent of polyp finding. And the linked color imaging has also shown in recent studies that there is some uh, increase in overall polyp detection rate, as you can see from this study published in GIE by a MIN. And now we go to more specific detection techniques and characterization methods, which are mainly used in research settings, but are being developed for practice. Molecular imaging actually involves the injection of contrast into the patient's vein and then to use a special endoscope that looks at these uh, antibodies or these markers. So the concept of personalized endoscopy in medicine is becoming real. As I mentioned before, uh, these antibodies are injected. Generally, they are useful, these methods of molecular imaging, to detect inflammation in patients who have, for example, Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis. So by uh, injecting the antibodies, and then applying the endoscope to the mucosa, it, you are doing molecular imaging. It's uh, something that cannot be still applied in, in general practice. It might have potential use in the future if the method of creating the antibodies becomes much uh, cheaper. Here, Berggraf uh, showed some instances where with cyanin, molecular imaging methods, he was able to correlate these uh, polyps. But we go back to what I had told you before.